So Udio pushed out an update to allow paid users to upload and extend songs using their AI generation system. And I gotta say, it's really impressive. So as a musician, I wonder what it might be like to take some of my catalog of published and some in progress work and see how it does. So let's check out the tool next. Everybody, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and you might be asking yourselves, like, what is Udio? Udio is a music AI generation system. That the music generation thing right now is really hot, and actually, it's moving fast, as so much in AI is. But when music generation kind of started not too long ago, kind of making headlines and stuff, you'd listen to the music, you'd be like, man, okay, I get it but it doesn't sound anything close to like what we're getting on the radio or what I love, the kind of music. It doesn't have any soul. It sounds very robotic. That has really changed in the last, I'd say, four to five months. There have been a lot of challengers. Suno is one of them. Udio, of course, which I'm going to talk about today. Now that's udio.com. And you want to be sure and go to that URL if you want to check it out for yourself. There are some uh, lookalikes out there. So don't go to those other sites. They might confuse you and they're the wrong ones. Udio.com is where you go and you can check it out for yourself. They do have a free plan that gives you some free credits on a regular basis, regular monthly basis, or you can pay for some of their more premium plans, get more credits, get more access to different features. And you actually do need to pay uh, in order to get access to some of the features that I'm going to show you off today. The feature that they've rolled out is uh, something that allows you to upload a song, a track, and say, all right, here's the source. Now extend this with your AI. I'm a musician. I have a ton of recorded ideas, and I really am very curious to know what Udio or Udio, however you want to pronounce it, uh, will do when processing the music that I've written. And it's mine, so I own it. So why the heck not? And I haven't tested this yet. So we're all going to experience this together. So let's jump on in and use the tool and check it out uh, together. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Udio. And right up at the top is this upload button. The first track I want to try is actually the source track that I used when I created the theme song for the Text Bloater podcast. And it, so it sounds similar to something that you might have heard before. It also sounds uh, a little bit slower. It's definitely different. It was more of an inspiration layer than anything. Now, I do have to you know, let them know that I own the right to use this music and can distribute this file. Yes, go ahead and confirm. And now it's uploading that file. So we just have to wait for that to happen. All right, so I've uploaded the file to the system. Now, first things first, we're going to go over to this button right here that says crop and extend. I'm going to hit extend and that opens up kind of this new feature. This is essentially the sound that I uploaded. So we can listen to what it sounds like prior to any work here. Super slow, right? It's definitely not the tempo that I ended up putting out on the Text Motor podcast. We'll extend this. And I wanna see where the cutoff point is. Okay, let's let's just cut it there. Okay, so we've crop and extended. Now we've selected our in and out point. That's important. Um, we also want to set some tags. So they give you a whole list of tags up here at the top, and you can kind of go through here as like the the guidance or the inspiration for what you want out of the extension of this song. So you know, electronic that makes sense. Maybe some synthesizer. Um, sure, house. And I don't know what else. Uh, hey, what about guitar? Sure, we'll go ahead and throw that in there. And um, let's say something like, you know, spaced out reverbs. Okay, now, do I want this to be an instrumental or do I want it to actually have some lyrics? And I think for right now, let's just stick with instrumental. We can use this to generate lyrics. We'll get to that in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and fire off instrumental. Now, if you open up the advanced features section, you do get uh, some extra controls here. And I'm not gonna pretend like I completely understand these because I'm learning with you, but prompt strength, you know, how closely do you want it to adhere to the prompt? Let's go ahead and set that to something like 70%. I'm not doing anything with lyrics. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, clip start. 
Is this saying that at 40% is where it starts to detect what uh, it's creating from? Uh, you know what? I'm going to set this to the beginning just to see what it does. Okay. And then, um, and then of course, up here, I kind of... Um, I skipped over the extension placement. This is an area where you can determine where you actually want the AI to expand upon. Do you want it to expand at the beginning, uh, to add a little intro at the end, somewhere in the middle, that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to leave it where it's at and we'll see what it does. So now we've got things set up. I'm going to go ahead and hit extend. All right, and with that, with the magic of uh, pausing and flashing forward into the future, we have my creations. So it is created to, it has you know added, I think, an additional 30 seconds, which is at most what you get out of extension right now. And I think you could extend more and more beyond that. But let's take a listen to the first of two generations that were created on that source audio. And I do think that it starts with the source, right? Before it gets into its remix. So we'll hear very soon where it's gonna go. sound like a remix to me oh that's pretty sweet oh, I love that oh that was extended that was that's unexpected <laughs> I am so happy with that I hear that as a musician and now what I want to go into, because I, I find myself as a musician searching for that moment of inspiration where suddenly I come alive inside. I'm always looking for that like spark where I'm like, oh, whoa. You know, it's almost like a it's almost like a goose pimples sort of feeling. And I'm like, I know exactly what I would do from here. Or it would kind of fuel and feed me in the next direction of the song. And that totally does that for me. It was a little unexpected there at the end, but like. I dig it. Like I would totally riff on that. And, you know, maybe if I could get, man, if I could just get a hold of the stems that make that up so I could split them apart and kind of mix them and not be just committed to the overall mix and instead be able to play with the pieces, that would be Mecca for me. All right, let's take a listen to the other example and uh, see if it does something a little bit differently. Okay, this is a little bit more abstract. <laughs> oh my goodness, I would never do this, but I love it. Oh man, it adds such a oh such an ambiance to it. See, I want that to continue. Now what I'm wondering, so if I take that that clip that we just heard. And I go ahead and extend that beyond that point. So now I'm going to cue this off on the second half because I'm like, I like what you came up with, although it is weird. It is totally weird. Uh, and I want it to go further. OK, I'm going to hit extend and we'll see how it does extending itself. I am so into this. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm waiting for this to generate, here's the reason why I like it. Because sometimes as a musician, I work myself into a corner. And I've, I've had all this inspiration to get an idea to a certain point. And then I hit that point. It's like, okay, uh, now what? Like, where do I go? There's no sign pointing me to where I go. Sometimes I've spent the inspiration. It's, it's like a bank. And I've, I'm now on empty. And it's like, I have no clue where to go. And I have so many ideas that hit that point, And they started off so great. And then I hit that, like, I've spent the bank of inspiration. And I don't know where to take it. And sometimes something like this might be a way out. It might be a way to hear it through different ears. And even if I don't go with the idea, like even if I don't commit to the AI generated thing, it might give me another idea. It's more like a collaborative partner to say, well, did you think about maybe something like this? And then I can go back to the music and go, well, oh, I didn't, but now I do. And, you know, that gives me a direction to go. And that might fire, you know, light that fire again. All right. So it's now back. 
So we have the extension. So now let's listen to this. Ooh, that's nice. Oh yeah! Up, up, up. Yes! Oh, sounds good. Oh, it's got a nice groove. Yeah, the parts actually really work well together. Oh my goodness. Now I got a little... <laughs> oh my God. It goes into this like weird soundtrack direction. Oh my God. I would never think to do that. That's just so bizarre. And some of the some of the chord uh, content is a little discordant, right? Like some of the some of the not just the structure, the structure seems pretty sound. It's following a pretty standard structure for this type of music. But there are some chord transitions and directions that it goes in that I certainly wouldn't choose to write in. And I notice that sometimes in artificial intelligence uh, generated music is that, you know, it, it might, it's almost like it makes sense on paper, but then when you hear it, you're like, eh, okay, I guess they're in key, but that's a weird kind of transition to make. Uh, let's listen to the other one before I move on to a different uh, idea. <laughs> if you're still following, because this is so much fun. For me, it's fun because it's my music. You might be bored out of your mind, but let's take a listen to the second idea. I like that. I would totally put that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I dig this version more. It doesn't quite, it doesn't quite go into that like weird soundtrack area, even though that was like really creative and unexpected. This one stays locked into kind of the aesthetic that like really speaks to me, right? Like that's another one of those where I'm like, oh man, just give me the stems. I would totally work with that. All right, let's try, let's try another one. Let's see if I can find one that, um, I want to try two more ideas real quick here, and I'm not going to do the full uh, the extension thing with these two. I'm going to pick one song that you might know if you follow my work, the AI Inside theme song, since this is artificial intelligence after all. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the upload button and run the AI Inside theme song through Udio and uh, see what it comes up with. Okay, so I've got the AI Inside theme here. Of course... I imagine some of you would recognize it. Let's set our in and out point. We'll go ahead right there. Okay. I don't know if this, how this is going to work. We're going to set the prompt strength to 75, uh, all this other stuff. Yes. Adding another section, auto generated lyrics, a song about how AI is working with human musicians to become the virtual studio collaborator. They always wish they had for a, a solo uh, music producer. There's a little shred of truth in that for me. Okay. So we've, we're going to go lyrics here. We're going to go uh, down the road of lyrics. Uh, maybe I'll set this more to like 60%. Who knows what it's going to do. All right. Um, and then some themes here. Maybe whew, synth pop, electronic, techno, ambient. Yeah, sure, ambient breakbeat. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Go ahead and hit extend and see what happens. This is so fascinating to me. Like this is this is really eye-opening for me. <laughs> All right, so we have our results. I'm slightly nervous because it's gonna have some lyrics and Boy, I have no idea how this is going to sound, but I'm really curious to see. So here's the first of two versions. Oh. Okay, the transition was not good. Oh my god, 
God, the lyrics are awful. Bringing beats to the team. Oh, <laughs> Make it stop. Make it stop. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, that was not good. Those lyrics, I don't know that I'd ever use this for lyrics if that's the kind of stuff it puts out. But lucky for you, we've got another example. Also, I will say the transition into the remix part out of the ambient part um, was not good. I probably would have been better off trimming the end of the generation before the drums come in to give it more space to put its own percussion because it really seems like Udio likes to do that and works. I don't know. So far, it seems like it works best if you've got a little bit of that ambient soundscape to tack on their additions onto. Um, but we haven't heard the second example that also has lyrics. And once again, I'm slightly scared. So let's take a listen. For just this moment, Okay, Tech better transition. Combined. Woo! Rhythms in twine, digital minds aligned. Oh, that's so sick! In this studio where the beats get real. <laughs> no limits. Oh my god, the lyrics are horrible. We feel from code to chord, we bridge the gap. <laughs> Songs created in a seamless map. Oh my God, this is so weird, you guys. It is so weird to hear a song that I have created that I have, uh, that means a lot to me because it's like the theme song of my podcast and something that I do on a weekly basis. I hear it every single week and to hear it reimagined through different ears. Now, granted, the lyrics and the vocals, like, I am not at all convinced that I would ever use this. I have heard plenty of examples on Udio of lyrics and vocals that are generated that actually sound really impressive. Neither of these examples give me any hope or desire to continue down that road. But now I wish I could go back and take out those vocals because the remix of the music portion, I'm sorry, that was sick. That was awesome. I am so pumped up about this. Okay. <laughs> One more example. We got to go one more. And actually, I think this next one's going to be a good one to do. Let's see here. Charlie goes home. It is more of a, it is, it, it doesn't have any drums or percussion at all. It was more kind of like a, I was playing with a chords and a kind of a soundscape sort of thing with this. So I'm going to wipe out the prompt that we had and Charlie goes home. Let's see where we want to, where we want to crop this. This is the, the music as it stands. Be about 22. So this is actually a really good case of like, I've got an idea and I want to know like what directions can I take this idea? This could give me a really good starting point as far as workshopping uh, directions. So, you know, I'm thinking a little bit of a, a break beat, ambient techno, ethereal. Yes, of course. Futuristic. Ooh, I saw nocturnal. That sounds interesting. And sure, psychedelic. These are all, you know, elements that I like. Uh, and also syncopated uh, to get some like choppy rhythms in there. Okay. So we've got add section. We've got prompt strength. Not going to do lyrics. So I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to never do lyrics again, maybe someday in the future. But um, I also got to say, like, I've got the generation quality at high. I feel like the the quality of the output is pretty solid. Extend. All right. It's the moment of truth. I'm hearing a whole lot so far. change the transient quality of it. Okay, very Space Cadet. Ooh. Ooh. 
that's going in a direction that I could see. I feel like the extension there is just a little too short. Like it, it took so long to get to the actual juice. Also, when it switched over, the transience of the synth line that I had created kind of flattened a little bit. And I, I could tell that it was an AI generation kind of duplicate or regeneration of the original. It sounded a little less pristine. So I like the idea. Actually, the the um, the kind of tonal quality of that 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 kind of whirring kind of high synth line there towards the end and the direction of it. I actually like that. Like I could see opening up that project and adding a layer that does something similar to that and then being able to play with that. So that's a really great idea. But that's one idea that I got out of it. Uh, let's let's see what the other one has in store for us. That one didn't quite have the payoff that I was hoping for. Let's try one more time. One thing that I didn't get out of either of these was the kind of breakbeat quality that I wanted in something, you know, something along those lines. Um, but it's not really adding any percussive quality. And there's definitely something about the tonal aspect of this loop that is throwing it off because when it switches over, it's not quite able to replicate the sound. It's an obvious transition. And the layer itself, like I actually like it. If it wasn't side by side with the layer that I had created, it wouldn't sound less. But because they're side by side, you really tell the difference. If I was to take that second layer and create a loop out of that, and, and, and work that in as another layer, I could totally do that. Okay, two more real quick. We're gonna play these real quick and then we're gonna be done. Here we go. I need some sort of percussion something. No, okay. There's something to that. All right, let's uh, skip forward to the second one. Ooh, I like that chord. Yeah. Excellent synth choice. Ooh. Yes. Oh man. Oh, that just that gave me those that like chill, whatever you want to call it, that like that like goose pimple of inspiration. Um, that is something that I would love to loop in. And it didn't quite have the percussive element, but it did have something, man, that there was a combo of sounds there and that one chord that it went into that was super unexpected, not what I had given it. Oh man, see, there's those are the threads of inspiration that I look for when I think about a collaborative situation with an AI. I don't need an AI to generate everything for me, but what I want from an AI is to is to come up with ideas. It's the same way that I use LLMs, right? I don't necessarily take the output of an LLM and just go with it. I use it to get give me ideas for where I could go, and then I turn it into my own from there. And that's what I want out of music generation. That's what this tool is giving me right now, I know for a fact I'm going to use Udio more uh, along these lines to work on inspiration, on ideas. I could see myself sitting down with a bucket of my song uh, clips and running it through five or six times, coming up with the ideas and basically doing snippets of the ideas that I like, and then opening up my digital audio workstation, opening up that project and replicating some of those ideas and then using that to be a launch pad for something else. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a good chord progression or a good, you know, a string of notes, but the sound that they chose is not quite right, or it is, but maybe it would sound better with, you know, another layer of it, you know, on a, on a lower register. And all of these things are options that as a musician, who wants to you know infuse myself with a creative inspiration 
That's what this tool is really doing for me. Are you a musician? What do you think about this stuff? I know there are a whole lot of ethical considerations when it comes to music generation. I know a lot of creatives are uh, in some ways very scared of products like this because they fear that it's going to, you know, it's going to minimize their ability to create and make money off of this stuff because it's going to be so easily achieved. But I see it as a tool. Do you see it as a tool? I would love to know. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about some of the output and the quality that Udio is bringing to the table. And if there's something that you'd like to see out of this technology as we go forward. And uh, I promise to respond because this is a topic that is endlessly fascinating to me. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe. Thank you for being here. I'm Jason Howell. I'll see you on the next video.